فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Now this qa'id is important, one needs to memorize. Now this is istidrad, the shaykh went just like when, when he put a sentence in between them. Which is ma'rifatu sabi nuzul, knowing the reason why a verse came down, it will help you on what? Ala fahmi al-ayat, knowing the ayah, what, what it came down on. فَإِنَّ الْعِلْمَ بِالسَّبَبِ يُورِثُ عِلْمَ بِالْمُسَبَّبِ Right? Give you an example. Are you with me, brothers? Allah said in the ayah, إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ Right? فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوْ اعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُلَاحَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا If we look at this ayah, Allah says, Inna safa wal marwa min sha'airillah. Safa wal marwa are from the symbols of Islam. And then Allah tells us in this verse, فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ Allah says, فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوْ اِعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاحَ There is no harm on him, the one who goes for umrah or hajj, أَنْ يَطَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا That he does the sa'i, بَيْنَ الصَفَا wal marwa. There's no harm on him. Are you with me, brothers? فَلَا وَمَنْ تَطَوَعَ وَمَنْ اَعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَحَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَوَّفَ بِهِمَا فَلَا جُنَحَ The word جُنَحَ means فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ There's no sin on him. Pay attention to this, brothers. It's very powerful. Because if you say there's no sin on them, it means that they are allowed to do sa'i if they want to or they want, if they want, they can leave it. That's what the meaning that's taken out of it. Are you with me, brothers? Yeah? And that's what some can understand from that verse. But when we look at the sabab nuzul of why the ayah came down, we will realize that that's not what is meant. The sabab nuzul will clarify that for us. So ma'rifat to sabab nuzul to inu ala fahm al ayah. Now to understand this ayah is connected to the sabab nuzul. What does it mean? Before Islam, the kuffar of Quraysh they used to place on each of the safa wal marwa, both of them. They used to place idols on it, and they used to run to the idols. So when the Sahabas came into Islam, they were a bit. They were a bit. Uh, scared and, 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 and what do you call it? Uh, if it was the right thing for them to do Sa'i Bain Safa al Marwa. They were obst they were they were hesitant of doing it. So what the Prophet sallallahu the ayah was sent down on him and it was told to them, don't this hesitant and this concern that's in your hearts and your minds, get rid of it. You can do it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what it, the Falajuna has responding to. But the Aslul Hukmi is wajib. You have to do Safa al Marwa. Are you with me? So Fala Ithma is talking about their concern which they had. Does that make sense? Another ayah, that's another ishkal. Allah says in the ayah, Laysa ala ladina amanu wa aminu salihati junahun fi ma ta'imu ila mataqaw. The ones who come with piety and are God-fearing, and they fear Allah Tabaraka. Are you with me, brothers? And they fear Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Are you with me? There's no harm in what they eat after they come with piety and, and taqwa. There's no harm in what they eat. That's what the ayah is saying here right now. Laysa ala ladina amanu wa aminu salihati junahun. Junah means what? We just take that word. Oh, word. Laysa ala ladina amanu wa aminu salihati junahun. Fi ma ta'imu ida ma taqwa. If they come with taqwa, there's no problem with what they eat. So I can eat pork if I come with piety. I can drink alcohol if I come with piety. Based on the ayah. Based on the bahir of the ayah. But you will know when you look at the Sabun Nuzul. The Sabun Nuzul tells us that there were a group of companions from the Prophet's companions. Are you with me, brothers? There were a group of companions from the companions of the Prophet who died before the alcohol was made haram. And so the Sahabas who saw the, who lived after the ruling was set, uh, sent, they said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, where are our brothers who used to drink alcohol with us? Where are they going to go? Because we now know the serious rulings that are on huh? the one who drinks alcohol. But what about if they died before, you know, when it was haram? Allah says, because they came with taqwa and they came with piety, what they eat was not a problem. Because they were before the ruling, right? They were before the ruling. Does that make sense how the ruling helps a lot now? The sabab nuzul. So, ma'arifatu sabab nuzuli tu'inu ala fahmi al-ayah. Walidhalika Umar radiallahu anhu never used to let anyone teach if he didn't know the sabab nuzul of the Qur'an. Umar never used to let anyone teach if he didn't know the sabab nuzul of the Qur'an. Are you with me, brothers? And it's important to study Sabah Nuzul. Another last example would be, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah says in this ayah, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ 
they are not going to believe in you, Muhammad. Fala wa rabbika by Allah, they are not going to believe in you if they what? If they don't make you their judgment, if they don't judge by you. Are you with me, brothers? If they don't judge by you and they don't make you their judge, their source of judge, they are not going to believe. So Iman is being negated from them. And we know, according to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah's view, is that when Iman is negated, in the Nusus al in the Kitab and the Sunnah, one of two is negated. Either Aslul Iman, the foundation of your Iman is negated, so you become a Kafir. Kharijun Amillat al Islam. You leave Da'ira al Islam. You leave the fold of al Islam. Or what can be negated from you can be Kamaluhu al Wajib. Which does not make you a kafir, but what it does is it reduces your iman. It reduces your iman highly. And never does the sharia come and negate your iman, and what is referred to it is kamaluhu al mustahab. That's the belief of the murji'ah. And we spoke about that in the sharh of Kitabul Iman. Are you with me, brothers? Now, here, where, where in front of us is a verse, Fala wa rabbika la yu'minun. And there's two ihtimal, there's two possibilities. Is what's been negated here kamaluhu al wajib? Am asru al iman. And a group of uh, people took it as, and they became incorrect in their opinion, is فَلَوَ رَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They took it as أَصْلُ الْإِيمَانِ And they said, if you don't judge by the Prophet ﷺ, you're a kafir. Are you with me? And so they used this ayah like that. But when we go back to the سَبَبُ نُزُولِ الْآيَةِ We will learn and we will find out that what? That what's being negated here is كَمَالُهُ wajib, And not أَصْلُ الْإِيمَانِ it came down on Zubair, Zubair ibn Awam. Zubair used to have a garden. It used to, what did he used to do? The rain when it come da came down, his garden, Zubair ibn Awam, was the upper garden. And there was an Ansari who was on the lower garden. So Zubair, what he did, would do is when the rain came down, he would, he would close off the rain, uh, the, the water, so he can stay in his garden. And So this Ansari complained. To the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, Ya Rasulullah, Zubair is doing this. Meaning, Zubair doesn't let the water come to me. He there. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he heard, he said to him, Zubair, isqi ardak. Let your water, your land, uh, receive the water and let it, and lock it in. But when you when when he does it's all for you, don't just keep it locked, just open it for him and let him have the water. He got angry. The Ansari got angry. And he said you judged for him because he's relative to you, he's related to you, that's why you judged for him, to the Prophet. And then are you with me? And what? And then the Prophet, he looked at Zubair and he said, Zubair, isqi ardaka waghliqu, lock it, close it, don't let him have any of the water. Lock it for lock it fully. From this now we realize that this man was a Bedri, Bedri participated Bedr. Are you with me? And what was negated here? No, the Prophet didn't make a, him a kafir. Are you with me? And the ayah is a deal on him. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُ فِي أَنفُسِمْ حَرَجْ مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا The ayah came down in regards to him. And the Prophet didn't make him a kafir. Are you with me? So the sabab nuzul can actually clarify a matter which there's a niza and a dispute regarding. Are you with me? Well, like one of the best books written in this that one can read and look over is Al-Imam Al-Wahidi's Tafsir book. Especially that it's, now, it's been worked on and it's been authenticated and it's been verified and it's been... is good. al Sheikh Mukhbir ibn Hadi al wadi also has a Sahih version of Asbab Al-Nuzul. The, the verses that have come down, the authentic Asbab Al-Nuzul that have come uh, regarding it. Now, don't forget. I hope you haven't. You guys haven't forgot. That's the Al Fadl Muabbara of the Asbab Nuzul is how much? Three, right? We've only mentioned one. The Sheikh one on Istidrat. That's Ibn Taymiyyah. We're coming back again. We've got two more left. Are yeah. The statement this verse was revealed due to such and such can sometimes mean that this was the reason the verse was revealed. It can also imply that this meaning is also present in the verse even if it is not the reason for its revelation, i.e. the meaning of this verse is such and such. So, so the, what did he say? Um, can you read that, the fourth one again? The fourth one, the fourth point. 
the statement this verse was revealed due to such and such can sometimes mean that this was the reason the verse was revealed. It can also imply that this meaning is also present in the verse even if it is not the reason for its revelation, i.e. the meaning of this verse is such and such. وقولهم نزلت هذه الآية في كذا يراد به تارة أنه سبب النزول ويراد به تارة أن هذا داخل في الآية وإن لم يكن السبب كما تقول عنا بهذه الآية كذا نعم so this is what um, this is also الظاهر is a second type That's ظاهر. It is not صريح. It's not direct. But it's ظاهر. صحيح. Right? Which we took. When the seven nuzul, the second type. Right? The third type is what? If this is known and one states this verse was revealed due to this, this does not contradict a similar statement from someone else. As long as the word can include both meanings as we have explained when discussing tafsir by way of example. Likewise, if one mentions a reason for which the verse was revealed and then another mentions a different reason, it is possible that both are speaking the truth and that the verse was revealed after a number of incidents took place or the verse was revealed twice on each occasion for a different reason. This is the third type, which is muhtamal. It's a possibility. Does it have hukm rafi No. Sabu nuzul? Yes. But is it, is it hukm rafi No, because it's an ihtimal. Raf it can only be given to something which is clear cut. Naam. Wa ida uri fahada fa kawlu ahadihim nazalat fi kada la yunafi kawla al akhir nazalat fi kada ida kana al lafdu yata yatana yatana wa lu yat Can I see your copy? Does it say fi kada or say fiya? Does it say fi kada or fi kada? Okay, hey, good. إذا كان اللفظ يتناولهما كما ذكرناه في التفسير بالمثال، وإذا ذكر أحدهم لها سببا نزلت لأجله، وذكر الآخر سببا، فقد يمكن صدقهما بأن تكون بأن تكون نزلت عقب تلك الأسباب. أو تكون نزلت مرتين مرة لهذا السبب ومرة لهذا السبب These two different categories of tafsir which we have just mentioned variation in names and attributes or different categories and types with which they are described such as illustrations are the two most predominant types of tafsir found amongst the predecessors which may be thought of as differences in opinion وهذان الصنفان اللذان ذكرناهما في تنوع التفسير هما الغالب في تفسير السلف الأمة الذي يظن أنه مختلف So here it is The majority of the khilafat Between the salaf and the ummah Goes back to these two The two is referring to here or what? Khilaf al These are the two reasons why it go, Majority of the khilaf is The ones that are different That are oh, they differed. The Sahabas are differing in the Quran. What can I do? There's a problem here. No, the majority of it is khitilaf tarawur. And it goes back to one of these two that we just mentioned. No. Another type of difference which can be found is where we have ambiguous words. This can be done in two ways. Firstly, it is ambiguous because it has a number of meanings in the language, such as the word qaswara, which can refer to a shooter, or a lion, and the word as'asa, which can refer to both the advent and the departure of the night. The second way it can be ambiguous is because even though the word originally only had one meaning, it denotes one of two different types or one of two things, such as, such as a pronominal subject 
which at times can refer to a number of things, like in the verse, Then he approached and descended, and was at a distance of two bow lengths or nearer, Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 8 to 9. Other similar words include Al-Fajr, the daybreak, Al-Shafr, the even, Al-Watr, the odd, and Layalin Ashr, the ten nights. It is possible that these words have the meanings the Salaf gave to them, or their meanings could be otherwise. ومن التنازع الموجود عنهم ما يكون اللفظ فيه محتملا للأمرين إما لكونه مشتركا في اللغة كلف مشتركا في اللغة كلفظ قصورة الذي يراد به الرام ويراد به الأسد ولفظ عسعسا الذي يراد به إقبال الليل وإدباره وإما لكونه متواطعا في الأصل لكن المراد به أحد النوعين أو أحد الشيئين كالضمائر في قوله ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنا وكاللفظ والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر وما أشبه ذلك فمثل هذا قد يراد به كل المعاني التي قالها قالها السلف وقد لا يجوز ذلك. So here his sheikh is going into the third type that we mentioned. Remember, the, there's ambiguity lying in this issue. It could either be from the angle of min likoni he mushtarakan. It could be mushtarakan fi lugha, like the word al ain, or wa imma likoni mutawafti fi al like al insan. And he gave an example of mushtarak is the issue of al qaswara and asasa, and he gave you the mutawati. An example for it is thumma dana fatadalla, fakana qaba qawseini aw adna. Who is the damir going back to? This pronoun. Who is he going back to? And also the word wal fajr wal layali ash. This word al layali. Is it the ten days, last ten days of Ramadan? Is it the is it the days of Dil Hijjah? Are you with me? Which of those ten are they? Those are the sheikh's example here right now. He brings it under the issue of mutawati. Sahih is mutawati. It's like insan. It encompasses all of them. Are you with me, brothers? So that's the third type for the uh, types of uh, the second type of ikhtilafu tanawur. This is the third type for it. Naam. Another statement of theirs, which is commonly thought to be a difference of opinion, is when they express an opinion each using a different choice of words. These words are similar in their connotations, but not synonymous. There are very few words in the Arabic language which are synonymous. This is even rarer in the Arabic language. Sorry, this is even rarer in the Quran, if not non-existent. It is rare to express the exact same meaning using two sets of words. At best, the meanings will be approximate. This is from the miracles of the Quran. وَمِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ الْمَوْجُودَةِ عَنْهُمْ ويجعلها بعض الناس اختلافا أن يعبروا عن المعاني بألفاظ متقاربة لا مترادفة فإن فإن الترادف في اللغة قليل وأما في ألفاظ القرآن فإما نادر وإما معدوم وقل أن يعبر عن لفظ واحد بلفظ واحد يؤدي جميع معناه بل يكون فيه تقريب لمعناه وهذا من أسباب إعجاز القرآن. He has the fourth type he's going into. But before I mention the fourth type, there was a statement that the author said. He said something. He said فمثل هذا قد يراد به كل المعاني التي قالها السلف وقد لا يجوز ذلك. He's talking about the issue of um, when it comes when it, when, the, when the verse when the wording is ambiguous and it's not clear. And it can take both. It can either be mushtarakan fil lugha or it can be mutawatan fil asli. Are you with me? Sheikh says there's two ways to deal with it. He says it here. He says, فَمِثْلُ هَذَا قَدْ يُرَادُ بِكُلُّ الْمَعَانِ You can either, it can be either mushtarak and mutawatan at the same time. And you can take both. الَّتِي قَالَ السَّلِفُ وَقَدْ لَا يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ And sometimes, are you with me? Sometimes it could be muhtamal lil ma'ani kulliha salihatul lim laha. Every meaning that's taken to it is good. We can take it, no problem. And sometimes it, 
imtala'a You can't bring them together. Ma'atil kan ma'ani. The meanings that are given, and here it becomes ikhtilaf al tabad. It goes into the other type. We can only take it based on qara'in, external forces, or external factors that actually strengthen it. And that's a point that we need to mention. Here, wa min al-aqwal al-mawjudati anhum wa yaj'aluha ba'adhu al-nasi ikhtilafa. He's talking about the qism al-rabi'a. The fourth type min sinf al-thani, from the second type of the ikhtilaf al tanawwa Which is basically, one of the miracles of the Qur'an, as the Sheikh brings, is min ijaz al-Qur'an. Which is that there is no word out there that can actually fulfill the meaning of a word in the Quran. That is impossible. It can only do what's close to it. Are you with me, brothers? There's no word that actually is a synonym that can actually take its place and that's, that it can be exchanged with. Are you with me, brothers? With that, like, all of the qiraat of the Quran never exchange a word with another total word. You'll never find that. <coughs> so here, either one word is taken out, and I'm. But never is it two different words that they're using here. Okay? Are you with me? Or if it does, then these two wordings, then these two wordings, for example, have two different meanings. There is impossible both of them mean the same. Does that make sense? It's impossible that these, the Quran, the Qiraat, or any of this, or even Tarjama, when the scholars come and they do comment on the Quran, word for word translation. Are you with me? It's impossible the word that they're trying to explain it with to be what? To be exactly that wording. Because the language that the Quran and the word that it picked from the words that were there, it can't be touched. It's a word that can, can't be, and no other word can be parallel to it. Are you with me? And that's when Allah said, إِذَا السَّمَاءٌ شَقَتْ And إِذَا السَّمَاءٌ فَطَرَتْ Both meanings Allah wanted from them. That's why He chose one here in فَطَرَتْ and another, another place in شَقَتْ You can't place in the in شِقَاق, Surah in شِقَاق إِذَا السَّمَاءٌ شَقَتْ You can't place إِذَا السَّمَاءٌ فَطَرَتْ and say, oh, it's a synonym. They both mean the same. They don't mean the same. Because they meant the same, Allah would have used the same wordings. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're two different wordings. And he chose it for a reason because each one has a meaning that the other one doesn't have. Sah. We know, for example, قَوْلُوا تَعَالَى يَا إِلَيْدِنَا عَمَلُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقُمْ بِنَبَئِنْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا And فَتَتَبَّتُوا Both don't have the same meaning. Both فَتَبَيَّنُوا and فَتَتَبَّتُوا Don't have the same meaning. That's why the Quran allows those two words to be, but they're not the same. It shows both of them as a qira'ah and, and a recitation. Does that make sense? It's very important that that is understood. And that's why the Shaykh, at the ending, he says, All that it does is when a word is explained with another word, it's just to bring the meaning close to you so you have an overall idea. But don't think to yourself that's exactly what it means. And he goes, That's why the Quran is mu'jiz. That no one can come with the likes of it. So if you can bring an ayah to explain an ayah in the Qur'an, then that means you can exchange the Qur'an and you can bring an eloquency close to it. So yeah. you can't. From here we can see the mistake made by those who substitute certain words with others. The correct opinion is that of the grammarians of the Basra school who state that it is a case of implication. ومن هنا غلط من جعل بعض الحروف تقوم مقام بعض وتحقيق ما قاله نحاة البصرة من من التدمين. This is we're now going to move into the eleventh point now, which is basically the mistake and the shortcoming of the ones who think they can exchange a word with another word. That's incorrect. What تحقيق the truth of the matter is and the true meaning is ما قاله نحاة البصرة. The scholars of the grammarians of Basra that every word that's been placed in to, 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 to another wording is from the angle min dalala to tadamuni. It just consists of it, that meaning, but it's not mutabak. Mutabak meaning is they both have the same exact overall meaning, it's incorrect. An example for that would be Qawlu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah, Ayna yashrabu biha ibadullahi. Are you with me? Biha ibadullahi. Someone they explain it, they say, Biha ibadullahi. And minha ibadullah. Ibn Taymiyyah is refuting here the statement of some scholars who say that the dama'iri taqumu ba'adaha bi ba'ad. That they take each other's places. He believes that that's not the case. Remember, we say that the dama'iri, they can take each other's places. Places. Are you with me? You can place the bat in the place of the lamb. Li Muhammadi bi Muhammadi. You can say that if you want to. And we say it's the same, it's not a problem. He says that no, the grammarians who are the Ahlul Basra are the strong ones. No, they don't. You might exchange it with another word, 
But you really haven't covered the other wording what it can cover. It only it use, it's only min dalalatil tabamuni from this angle. Are you with me? And it's not min dalalatil mutabaq, meaning both of them have the same meaning. Impossible. He refuses that. An example it will be, Aina yashrabu biha ibadullahi. Biha ibadullahi is being used here. Some say, for example, biha ibadullahi means minha. Because the word min is from the water. Are you with me? From the water. But the truth of the matter is biha ibadullahi, the word minha cannot take it. It can't take it. Because the word biha ibadullahi, it uses it, it gives us that from the, it's not, because minha just means only mere drinking. That's all it means. Mujarrad shurb. When you say minha. But when you say biha, it shows drinking with quenching your thirst. And it quenches your thirst and you don't, you're not thirsty anymore. Does that make sense? So when Allah used the word biha, he actually has a meaning extra to the meaning of what? Just a mere drinking. To gather these varying sayings and opinions of the Salaf is very beneficial. By gathering all these opinions, one will have a clearer understanding of the intended meaning, much more so than if he were just to collect a saying or two. وجمع عبارات السلف في مثل هذا نافع جدا لأن مجموع عباراتهم أدل على الم أدل على المقصود من عبارات أو عبارتين. This is the twelfth point, which is bringing together the statements of the salaf in matters like this and others are very beneficial. Are you with me? I mean, when you want to do a tafsir of an exegesis on a verse. What do you need? Bring all of the statements of the Sahabas and Tabi'een and the pious predecessors. Bring their statements here. Because each ibara that they bring, each wording, that term that they use, is because, remember, what did we just say? What did we just say, brothers? Pay attention, this is a very powerful qaida. If we just said that no ayah can actually cover the verse, what it means. Are you with me? Aina yashrabu biha. No word, no meaning can take it, right? No other word. If you just come with one of the mufassirin who said minha, you would actually just think it's mujarrad shurb. Are you with me? If another one comes and he uses a meaning, and let another wording explains it, and another one comes another word. When you bring them all together, it becomes clear to you that the word minha, it gives you the full pie, basically. So that's why Ibn Jarir Tabari does that. He brings a lot of tafasir on this ayah. Because if it since it, all of them are dalala to tadamuni, are you with me, brothers? When the tadamun come together, that's what makes a house, right? So the full picture will become clear when you get all of their pies together. So that's what the Sheikh is trying to say here, Rahimahullah, Rahmatullah, Wasi'ah. Bringing all of it. Isn't it then sad to say, isn't it sad to see today that somebody who won't do tafsir from the self asalat at all? And would even admit, I don't even, even know the process and statements. When we come to Turuq al Tafsir al Quran, we'll see it, which is the next chapter. The issue of tafsir of the Quran based on the, the Prophet and his command. I don't even know the hadith of the Prophet. He says, I don't know it. Are you with me? We're not just saying don't. We're saying not just to do it with the Prophet statement, not the Salafi. Try to come bring them all. Look at each one what they said. That's what the Sheikh Rahimullah here is saying. Well, he himself was like that. He himself as an individual was like that. He said in his Majmu' al Fatawa, "Kuntu la atakallamu fi tafsir al I will never speak about a commentary of a verse. Unless I look and I observe a hundred tafsir, he said. Ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullah. And it was said, and it said that he also, he wrote a book where he brought all the tafsir of ayat of the aqwal of the salaf. He did that. But this is la wujuda lahu liyawm. There's no way to be found. There's no way to be found. We don't have it. So he would stand over so many aqwal from Ibn Abbas, maybe four or five different opinions that Ibn Abbas has on the, the particular ayah. Since it's the Dalalat to tadamun Ibn Abbas would say each tadamun, right? Are you there? If I take a window from the house, another one says door, another one says locks, another one says room, we're all talking about what? The house. So Ibn Abbas may say all of the different types. But when you bring them all together, locks, doors, everything, it becomes a house. It becomes a, 
it becomes a house for you. Now you know that what's been spoken about here is a, it's the house. So you actually, from that, you find that the Dalalatul Mutabak, which then becomes clear for you what it is. But we said that the Quran can't be done Dalalatul Mutabak Asalatin, because the ayat, the wordings are very strong. Naam. Naam. Even with all of the above, there exists general dif- genuine differences of opinion amongst the Salaf, such as their differences in matters of jurisprudence. ومع هذا فلا بد من من اختلاف محقق بينهم كما يوجد مثل ذلك في الأحكام. Here is the last point of this chapter, which is the thirteenth point, is that with all of that said, there is still difference that are between them. This difference now is اختلاف الطباد. There's no way to reconcile between them. Just like you find between them in matters of ahkam, they have ikhtilafat which are tabad. You can't reconcile between the two. There are. But that is so little that it's as though there's no need to mention it. The dakhilafat. Because the overwhelming people say to you, no, well, I know a lot of ikhtilaf tabad. If you bring it, it can be put in one of these categories. It's really no ikhtilaf tabad. Little can we say we've given up. And it's ikhtilaf al-tabad. Overwhelming majority of tafsir from the salaf of the ummah is ikhtilaf al-tanawur. Ikhtilaf al-tanawur. And just at, while I'm at this point, it's important that the person reads tafsir ibn Jarir al-Tabari, tafsir ibn Abi Hatim, al-Durrat al-Manthur written by Suyuti rahimahullah. These books, Durrat al-Manthur is the best. <coughs> in the sense why he's muta'akhir, he's a laykam, and he's done more in compiling from all of them. The only problem that his one has is because Durat al Mathur he, he summarized it from his previous book, which was called Tarjuman al Quran, which is Mafqood. We, can't, we don't find it. It was a bigger version he had. Suyuti, Jalaluddin al Suyuti. He summarized it from that and he took off all of the chains of narration. So there's no sentence for it. And that's what we need. We need to look at the authentication of some of the statements that he brings. Um, but the person, Yudimun Naba, sometimes you get bored. I've seen people get bored of it, looking at the different aqwal of the Sahaba and Tabi'in. Shirt. You shouldn't. Now that you've understood the purpose behind it, that it's not just mujarrah, just mentioning it. Oh, he's a compiler only. And the tafsir, I mean, Oju, and one of the writers. And we don't need to go more into that. He himself is going to bring it, Ibn Taymiyyah about Ibn Jarid's tafsir and how great it is. Ibn Taymiyyah is going to say it's the best, unprecedented. Ibn Taymiyyah. So, um, inshallah ta'ala, today we'll stop there. Uh, tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll carry on the next fasl and the fasl after, the fasl to come after that. Anything which I have said that was wrong, incorrect, a mistake, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِيْئَنِ مِنْهُ is from me, a shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu